Hello and welcome to the third video in this series looking at tips for the Kogos 2DX. So in this video I've already, I'm just going to run the application already and I've already prepared a little interface with a spin label and a stop label and the reason I've done this I don't usually copy and paste code or pre-prepare in this way but the point is is that this isn't about labels it's about this video is about actions on sprites and therefore I thought it's prudent not to waste too much time typing in the code for the labels but they're initialized here obviously the codes available for download anyway from this video so you can download it and take this code out and drop it into your own but what you'll need is the two definitions for the label here and then inside the initialization for the hello world inside the init just take this block of code here like so or pause the video and type it in now just so that the labels are there on the screen then the other thing I've added inside the touches began I've got an if statement now saying if the stop label bounding box contains where we've tapped on the screen or clicked or if the spin label bounding box contains the point where we've tapped or clicked do something else do something else and we'll see what we're going to do um, now in the video so we're going to deal with actions on a sprite in this video very simple stuff we're going to move the sprite when we to the point where we tap the screen unless we've tapped stop or spin and if we tap spin we're going to rotate the sprite one full rotation um, and the stop label stops the actions all of the actions on the sprite be it rotating or moving so the first thing we need obviously is a CC sprite and I'll call this one the tree and I of course need the little star there for a pointer and now we can go into hello world scene.cpp and just initialize this sprite which I'll do below where we've added the stop label so the tree equals and cc sprite create Then we just need the name which is tree dash hd dot png I'll put that in the download and then the position so we'll just call set uh, position and I'm just going to take the code from here actually to speed things up a little bit and we want it the the width divided by 2 and we want the height also divided by 2 and last but not least we want to add it obviously as a child to the layer like so so I'll just save and build that that should build OK and it's not build because I haven't put a semicolon on the end and I'll just run the application and make sure we have a tree in the middle of the screen and we do good so the first thing we have to deal with let's deal with then the moving action so we want a function in our class called move tree and we want to say where we want to move it to and we're going to define that as a CC point called position in fact we'll call it new position so it's obvious what it is and just take this function then and drop it inside the implementation the CPP file at the bottom of the file here and prefix with hello world and finally after a couple of minutes we're ready to look at how we'll move our tree so let's um, first of all the way we do it's very simple we create an action object of which there are various types and the movement one is called CC move to and give it a name so I'll call it action move and now CC move to has a create static function where you can see with the arguments here we can give a duration so let's say we're going to take uh, three seconds to move that's a little bit too slow let's say two seconds and then we want to say where to and we'll say new position and all we have to do to then run that action is simply to take the tree and say run action and action move and that's actually all there is to it so if we go back up into our touch here we can say in this else clause here then move tree to the location of tap so if I run the application then and now if I click the screen there you can see over the duration specified the tree is moving to the point where I've clicked obviously the further away it is the faster it goes because it's got to reach there in a certain amount of time but you can see the actions working now something interesting however with this action is what happens if I click quickly on the left here but also on the bottom 
And what happens is you can see it goes diagonally and like that. And the point is it runs the actions then simultaneously. It won't run one action after the other. So as I click over the screen, the actions then run for their respective duration, but they won't run cumulative in sequence in one after the other. So what we need is, is we need some way of stopping the previous click action before we start the new one. And one way to do that, or to stop the action, is to say the tree and stop all actions. So if I run again now, when I click for a new position, the current action will stop. So if I just let it run to this side, I'm going to click over to the right hand side and then down in the bottom middle, and it will then stop going across to the right hand side and then move to the middle, like so, as you can see. So each time I click, that action becomes the only action then running because it stops all actions. Now this is all very well, but what happens if we've got something else running, say our spin action, so it's in the middle of spinning and we've called stop all action. Well how do we deal with that? Well what we do is we give the action move a tag. So we call a set tag and give it an integer, and this I'll say give it a 1, and of course in a real app you would never hard code this number, it would be a constant. And now we can say on the tree, stop actions by tag and 1. And this will then only stop the actions that have the tag 1, which in our case is our move action, which means that the spin will still carry on happening. Now we can't see the effect of that, um, so we'll put the spin action in now, um, so we can actually demonstrate that. So going back into the header file, let's have void and spin tree. And this doesn't take any arguments at all, so I'll just drop this then into the implementation file down the bottom here. Void spin tree, prefix with hello world. And the code now is almost exactly the same. We want to say cc rotate by this time is what we're going to use to rotate, and we'll call it action rotate and equal cc rotate by again create a duration and let's spend one second rotating and let's rotate a full circle so 360 degrees let's do it over two seconds so it's slow so we can get it running with a move as well and then all we need to do is again run this action and the action rotate and we'll also set the tag on this one of zero so the rotation has a zero tag like so oops it should be action rotate Okay, so now we've got that, we can call our spin tree then whenever we click the spin label. And what we actually want to do is when we have the stop label, we'll call the tree and stop uh, action by tag. Now let's call stop all actions to start with so we can show this tag thing. So we have stop all actions. So if it's spinning and moving, all of these uh, will be stopped at the same time. So with the move tree we have our tag here and then the spin if I click the spin label then things will rotate and if I click the stop label then the tree, all the tree's actions will be stopped. So I'll just run the application. And now if I click spin you can see that we spin. And click spin again and it spins. And now if I click spin and move and then stop then you can see that it's stopped. Um, in the middle of its movement and in the middle of its spin. If however I call this stop action by tag and just use the tag 1 which we know is the tag for our movement action then the tree should carry on spinning. So if I click um, spin and move and stop you can see that it's stopped moving but carried on spinning. So it's now stopping them specifically by tag. So that's where that's particularly useful. And in fact, what we'd also want to do here is actually when we go to spin the tree, stop the previous spin as well, so we don't have the same spin action running simultaneously. So that's um, a bit longer video than I anticipated, but actually shows you really simply how you would move and rotate a sprite, and also how you would um, control what actions you want to stop and start on your sprite by giving them um, a tag number as well.
In the coming videos, we'll look a bit more at actions, so running actions, say in sequence, and also doing things like uh, scheduling and also calling functions um, from actions as well when, when a sequence of actions, say, has been completed. So I hope that made some sense and helped a little bit, and thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.